Hammond, right there, sir. David, sir, Michael Hammond, please say it at least twice. Hello. So, we are coming to the close of a fantastic weekend. You guys had a chance to visit some new experiences. Michael, we'll start with you. You just visited Diagon Alley recently. How was the experience there at oh, Diagon? It's just wonderful. I'd never seen that before, and I was just so impressed by it. It's overwhelming, isn't it? And accurate, and, and goes on forever. I was getting tired by the time I got to the end of where, where the railway begins. They said, are you getting on the railway, Michael? I said, no way. <laughs> because of this terrific railway. Anyway, I, I, I love it. Thank you, thank you. And James and Oliver, how are your experience over there? Yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic because it's good to see it now that with people in Diagon Alley because when we were here before it was, it was empty. Mm -hmm. um, it hadn't been open to the public before. So it was cool to see people's excitement, even just queuing up to go onto the train and waiting in line and everything. We walked through that for a bit yesterday, didn't we? Which was quite, quite fun to watch. And uh, yeah, just, just reliving all those experiences again. James? I learned not to wolf down a load of butterbeer ice cream then go straight onto Gringotts. That was a bad idea. <laughs> But yeah, it's um, like Oliver said, we were here for the opening earlier, well, last year, and that was mind blowing. But now it's even great to see people actually inside it and genuinely being like, seeing those faces, it's really cool. Yeah, and as, as we discussed a couple years back when you first went into Hogsmeade, I mean, it was the same experience you were saying as far as seeing these sets that normally would be green screen or partial sets for you guys, and now seeing these things that you interacted with on film kind of brought to life. Do you feel like it was, uh, they, they, I mean, they have, of course, done a great job, but did you feel the same way going into Diagon Alley with that experience? Definitely. We're still knocking on the on the wall to see if it's hollow or not. Obviously, it's not. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's even more, um, what's the word? Real? It, it involves you more. In, okay. Than mm -hmm. the immersive. immersive. Thank you very much. Yes. It's been a long day. Uh, it's very immersive for then even more than when you're on set. On set, you can literally go around the corner and you see that there's right. nothing behind it. Whereas obviously here, there's something inside every store, so it's uh, it's even better than the sets. And Ivana, I mean, you're of course a huge fan of Harry Potter as it is. How was your experience this weekend and getting to experience more of the of uh, the story? Um, I've just really enjoyed seeing all the costumes that people have come in, and I've really enjoyed going into the other parks, the non-Harry Potter parks, and seeing people just wandering around in robes with their wands. <laughs> I like think it's just normal now. It's like the wizards are uh, almost, they're um, outnumbering the muggles, which I love. <laughs> Very cool. Well, as uh, we are holding kind of to, uh, to the form of what we're going to do here, we thought we'd open up some uh, question and answer session to our audience members and let them uh, partake in this as well. So we're going to start out with Julia in the audience. Julia, who do you have with you? Hello, I have Tess with me. Today is her ninth birthday. Oh, happy birthday. She's from New York, and her question is for Ivana. Okay. First of all, you rock. And second of all, how did you get the part? You're awesome. Okay, so <laughs> the question is, how did you get the part? And a statement, you are awesome. Thank you. You're awesome, too, and happy birthday. Um, I got the part through an open audition, so I was a really big fan, I read all the books, watched all the movies, and um, I used to go on the websites, the fan sites, and on MuggleNet, they had an announcement for Luna Lovegood auditions, and um, I was like, that's my ticket, I'm going to London, <laughs> so I convinced my dad to bring me to London, and I had one audition there, and then a week later I had a screen test, and... That was it, they gave me the part. Very cool, fantastic question. Excellent, okay, we're gonna turn things over to Stephen. Stephen, who do you have with you out there? I have Jamie from Claremont with me. Hi, Jamie from Claremont, what's her question? Well, I just wanna let you know that I love all of you and your work, um, but my question is that after being here for the weekend and being here before, what is your favorite Harry Potter treat that Universal brought to life? Harry Potter treat as in like a, uh, a food or an experience or what an, is... An edible treat, like the ice cream or butterbeer. Okay, so something that you've had to eat that was from the Wizarding World, what, uh, what's your favorite? I would, I would say the ice cream butterbeer. That is, for me, it's my personal favorite. Michael, what's your favorite? Have you had Ice it? cream butter, no doubt. Delicious. 
I want some more. Can I have some now, please? Can we get Michael some ice cream? Ice cream to the stage, please, for Michael. James, anything uh, stick out to you? Mine's the warm butter beer or the hot butter beer. Hot butter beer. All right. Ivana? Yeah, the butter beer is good. I like it. I've actually never finished a whole one because it's so sweet, but I like the bit from the top. Last time I was here, my dad, he kept giving me his stuff from the top. It was really nice. All right, so butterbeer kind of seems to be the favorite in many different varieties. Thank you, that was a great question. Let's move on to Aaron. Who do you have with you there, Aaron? I have Casey here from North Carolina with a question for the panel. All right, hi, Casey. Hi, everyone. Are there any scenes that your character wasn't in that you wish you could have been a part of? Scenes that your character was not in that you wish they would have been a part of. Ivana, we'll start with you. Definitely all the women are coming. And I was happy to be a Raven, but I was happy to be in a book. They just looked like they were having so much fun, and they got to relax there, and that's where they celebrated the Quidditch matches, and I just felt like I was missing out, felt left out. <laughs> Great answer. All right, James? I think the, uh, the Dragon Challenge in the try was a tournament. But a bit, although Fred and George were in it, but they were kind of being bookmakers. So but I would have quite liked to have actually been trying to compete against the dragon. <laughs> I think I'd have, in the Order of the Phoenix, I'd have quite liked to have, um, have been when, I know Fred and George had already left the school by then, but when, um, when you've got the other five guys, like Evie was one of them, when they face up to the Dementors for the first time, mm. I'd like to have given that a go. Very cool. So of all the scenes that you were in with the movie, what of, of the scenes, which one do you wish you could have been a part of that you were not? Well, being Dumbledore, I, I, I was playing with the first time, and I was so frightened, you know, playing Dumbledore, if I'd get through it all right. So when I was not in a scene, like the scenes that you were in, I was glad I wasn't in them, you know. <laughs> because <laughs> I was delighted that I was only in the scenes I was in. And uh, I, didn't, I never really knew what was going on in the other scenes, but um, that was all right. So, in all actuality, you were in the exact scenes that you wanted to be in. Yeah, I was in the scenes that, that fitted me best, I suppose, because the way that it was written, J.K. Rowling, um, there was me in these scenes, and it was good. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great, great question. Uh, let's go to Rusty. Yes, Rusty. Hi, I have Shelby here from Fort Myers. Hey, Shelby. Fun question. All right. Hello. I wanted to know if there was like a favorite moment maybe behind the scenes that most people might not know about? A favorite moment behind the scenes that most might know about that you can, that was memorable not, for you. Not know about. Not know about. That we would not know about. I, I might have you come take my chair and you can finish up <laughs> these questions here for us. So let's feel that. Oliver, you want to have a go at it? Well, I can talk about it in public. Um, <laughs> there was... Yeah, there, there was quite a few good ones. I remember on one of the, um, one time when we were filming, it was someone, I don't know if it was someone's birthday or not, but a load of us went out um, for dinner in central London, just to a restaurant, and there was probably about, what, 10 of the cast or so, and people started looking over in the restaurant, and I think they thought that we were actually filming in there, because they didn't expect to see Harry, Ron, Hermione, Luna, Jimmy, Fred, George, <laughs> Neville. <laughs> having a drink or having a, you know, eating food out in public, but that was, that was quite cool. James? Uh, I remember we had a dartboard put up in Rupert's dressing room, so we played darts quite a lot, but then we got a bit bored of that, so we got a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> Still like playing darts with crossbow, and then we broke the wall. <laughs> Probably playing from the same range. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was all safe-ish. Yeah, that, yeah that, was, that was a lot of fun. Michael? Oh, well, I can't tell you mine, it's so naughty. <laughs> it involved Harry Potter. And enough said. Yeah. <laughs> and it was in the middle of the night. And we're saying way too much right now. And that's all I can say. You don't want me to continue. Ivana? Because obviously a lot of us were in school at the time, and I was in like my fourth 
year in school and we I had to do like a mini company and it was around Valentine's Day so I was like let's have a bit of fun and um, created like little boxes and took orders for people to send messages and you know I think Matt and Alfie they both um, they both had a crush on this like AD or this runner and they both like sent messages from each other that were really rude <laughs> and she got really confused but that was one of the days like um, I was really behind on orders and I had, hadn't folded enough boxes so everyone got involved and they all had like gave them all pink sheets of paper and we, kept, we had these huge pockets on our ropes so we'd have the paper in our ropes and they'd yell cut and everyone would start folding and you could just see pink all across the Great Hall. It was really fun. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. All right, let's go to, thank you for that question. Very nice. Erin, do you have somebody out there with you? I do. I have Claire here who has a question for Ivana. Hi, Claire. Hi, Ivana. This is more for Ivana the consultant rather than Ivana the actress. Um, and I was wondering, you know that you had a lot of uh, influence over how closely the films were to the books. And I'm just wondering if you could give us an example of a specific experience where they came to you and asked you if they were close enough or if fans would like it to be a little bit different. That's an interesting question. Yeah, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Just general, like, cast, they would kind of check in with me on things, like, um, just details. I remember, like, with, well, Luna's hair, that was a, a big one, because they wanted her to have short brown hair, and I just was felt it was so wrong that she has, like, an ethereal quality, and the big cloud of blonde hair helped. Um, and then afterwards, I remember them being like, you were right. <laughs> that was nice. Um, I don't know. Did I ever correct any? any? Oh, did I? <laughs> Like, there's a little, there's a part of the fan in you when someone says something wrong that you just can't, you have to just speak up, and so that came He corrects us a lot if we get things wrong, we being him. <laughs> it's for your own good. It is, it is, yes. So thank you very much, appreciate that question, thank you. All right, who else do we have out there? Rusty, are we going over to you? Yes, we can. Okay. I have Jennifer from Dallas with a question for the panel. Hey, Jennifer. If you had to choose another character from the series to portray, who would it be and why? Okay, having to choose another character from the series, who would that qu who would that character be and why would you choose that character? Oliver? I quite... Uh, <coughs> I've been asked a few times, I change every time I think about it more and more, because I go off stage and I wish I had that. But I think Victor Crumb would be quite good as well. Just because he was a bit more aggressive and he, was, he played a lot of Quidditch. And I like playing Quidditch. All right. Michael, do you have a, another character that you would have liked to have been? Oh no, I don't think so. I was, I was so frightened playing Dumbledore, I wouldn't want to play anyone else, you know. Um, I, I, I quite like to play, if I was a different sex, Maggie Smith's parts. <laughs> they're, the, they're the ones I'd go for, you know. I was always having rows with her and I'd like to take over from her in that role, but that would be <laughs> good fun. But um, no, I prefer playing Dumbledore, you know. I used to get annoyed sometimes when, I, I, you know Dumbledore has a big wig and a big beard and a moustache and long clothes. I, when, when I'm not wearing them and I'm walking through the seats, I was always getting upset that people didn't recognize me, you know. So I'd stop them and say, excuse me, do you know I play Dumbledore? And, uh, they'd say, no you don't. I'd say, I do, honestly, anyway, that's the truth. James. George, I'd like to play. George, yeah, yeah. all right, and and why? Kind of look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah wouldn't be too jump, too too far of a jump. Yeah, it would have been. It would have really pushed my acting abilities. Who is George? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. And just just before we came out here, Michael and I were talking. He goes, "I so enjoy, I so enjoy those boys." Where are all those boys? I really want them to be with us. Who's George? <laughs> oh, oh, George, George is... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Ivana, another character? Um, I would like to play Winky the house elf. <laughs> she was so cute. She was so cute. And she didn't make it into the movie. And I thought that was a shame. 
because she was such a sympathetic character and just like I felt, you know, Dobby's always has such a happy face on him. He's always so positive at the house self situation, but it's actually really sad. You know, they're enslaved and they um, they don't get to wear clothes. And I could definitely, I felt a lot of compassion for her being underground, you know, and neglected and having an alcohol problem. And I thought it would be, yeah, I think her story needs to be told. And I have a squeaky voice, so it's not that much of a stretch. All right, all right. Great question. All great questions. Steven, who do you have there with you? I have Samira, all the way from Miami. All right, hello, Samira. She looks very excited to be here. Hey, um, um, I have a question for all of you. It's, um, which scene would you rather have, because they cut a bunch of scenes from the movie, well, from the book, I mean, um, and which one would you rather have, like, I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, let me say it again. Um, Take your time. In the book, they cut a bunch of scenes from the movie. Okay. <laughs> in, the, in the movie, they cut a bunch of scenes from the book. Which one would you have if, like, one of the cut scenes, which one would you choose? I think we understood you. Let's give her a big round of applause. That's not easy. Not easy to do. So the books, as we know, were fantastic. There was so much information, so much, uh, so much great writing, and of course, all of it couldn't fit into the movies. But from what you experienced with the knowledge that you had of the books, what, what scene would you like to have made? That's a great question. Very good question. I would go with the... I, I'd have to say the swamp from the Goblet of Fire, for, for our characters anyway. Um, reading that, I was like, oh, that's wicked. And then when I was reading the script, I thought, well, you know what, it doesn't actually bring Harry's role into it too much, so... So it'd be good to bring the swamp into it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I like the Resistance radio program that Fred and George did, that was... Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, although we didn't do it for the film, but we did actually do it for the, the uh, EA Games video game. So that was, that was pretty... We kind of did it, but not on the, uh, on the scale of the films. Ivana? really lucky in that most of Luna's scenes made it in um, but I don't there's there's just like a moments that I think kind of show more of her personality and I think on the train when Ron makes a joke about Goyle um, and about Boone's backside and she finds it the most hysterical thing in the world and it's like not that funny a joke but she just cracks up and is like on the floor dying and it's everyone's just really worried about her and i just i find it funny just to watch people laughing that's one of my favorite things or when you tickle people i find that so funny so i, I would have liked to play that moment very cool michael well i, I you should, I, I feel very terrified to tell to tell you the same thing about this because uh, i have to tell you i, I didn't read the books no, that's true. I'm so sorry. I, I just, I just, I, I, I just learned the script. You see, no, only the, where Dumbledore speaks, I learned those lines, and I learned the line that goes after where it changes. And J.K. Rowling said to me that you don't have to read the book. You know, just read Dumbledore's parts. If you believe that, you believe in it. Um, so I, that's all. I have to admit that. I'm sorry. You should read them, they're good! It takes, Please forgive me. It takes a grand wizard to admit that, and I think, based on his portrayal in the movies, that he did a fine job regardless. Would you agree? Thank you. Definitely so. And a great question. You guys, are, you guys are doing a really great job out there. We appreciate that. Yes, Julia. Yes, I have Courtney from Winter Haven, Florida, with a question for James and Oliver. All right, hey, Courtney. That's an interesting question. Good. Yeah, what was your story? A lot like Sorry. Evie's, we, we first went for an open audition, and we saw that by, in one of the national newspapers in the UK, it said that they're doing open auditions for all the parts in Harry Potter. And I'd read the first book, and I knew, obviously, that there were twins involved. So we, um, our mum and dad agreed that we could go to Leeds, which is about two and a bit hours north of where we live, which in England is a really long way. <laughs> so, we, um, so we took a day off school, they knew about it, 
So we thought, at worst, we're going to have a day off school. So we went to went up to Leeds, and we discovered there was probably about about the same size as you got here, if not more, applying for all roles. And there was loads of kids. That's the first time we saw the pushy parent with um, like their kids with like portfolios like this big, wearing glasses, frames with no lenses in kind of thing. And it's like, you've got to see my child. You've got to see my child. We didn't even turn up with a Polaroid. Or, and we were even dressed differently. We saw other twins there with the same clothes on. So we were like, oh. We took a ticket and we had to wait. We, it was going to be about two or three hour wait. So we went to the department store over the street to buy two, two t-shirts the same off the same rack. Which we wore every audition. Which we wore to every audition. And then we thought, oh gosh. Well, we, got, we eventually got seen and it was kind of like a sliding doors moment. There's a door on the left, door on the right. And we stuck with the one on the left and that just so happens to be the head casting director. And she liked what she liked us, and then we were called back a couple of days later to go and meet Chris Columbus and David Heyman, the producer and the director. And then that happened three or four times. And I remember one of the last ones, one of the assistants said to us as we were leaving, she was an American, said, have a great life. So I was thinking, <laughs> well, I'll send her that then. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they then call us back for a screen test, um, which when they get you on a set for the first time with everybody, all the crew, and that was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. And we ended up doing the role, they tested us for, they were like, so what would you feel like if your hair was ginger? I'm like, yeah, yeah sure. And then two days later we had a phone call, and my mum picked up, and it was the, this casting director, Janet, and she said, um, so I might speak to the mother of the Weasley twins. And my mum was like, oh, hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> And that's how we found out we got the part. And that was over six weeks holidays from school. And um, yeah, so you should never skip school, but if you do, things happen. <laughs> Great question, thank you so much. Oliver, is there anything you wanna, that you wanna add to that? Maybe stuck out in your mind from that experience? Um, not really. <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was an experience which you kind of just keep going and going and going and you hope that you're doing something right. Um, and I can remember at one point, we actually, going into the audition process before us was um, another lad, Luke Youngblood, who ended up portraying Lee Jordan and we became really good pals. And uh, we met him actually on our third audition and we've been lifelong friends ever since. So it's amazing how you meet people so many years ago and they, they still stay in your life. It's fantastic. Awesome. Great question. Thank you so much. We're going to go out to Erin. I have Saida here from Puerto Rico. Am I saying that right? Saida. And her question is for the panel. So how did you guys feel when you first saw yourself in these films? And were, was, were there any moments in particular that you were like, wow, I really nailed that. Likewise, was there anything that you would like to change? So how did you feel when you first saw yourself in, in the role that you were playing and uh, is there anything that you would have wanted to change? I, I'd want to be better looking, I think. <laughs> I'd like to have a full head of hair. I mean, I'm bald and I, you know, that's what I'd like. I, I would have played the part better and I had more confidence, you know. <laughs> Do you believe that? you believe in it? And uh, so, no, I, I just... Um, I was just happy the way I looked, to tell you the truth. Um, I'd have asked them to do something with, uh, with my hair in the first two films, like gel it or, or something, instead of just keeping it flat down. You know, I look back now and think, do it, do it. I'd have made my voice deeper in the first movie. <laughs> because every Christmas you hear, yeah, I have a text message, because it's always on in the UK every Christmas day, and I get a text message from a majority of my friends saying, beep, 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 what the beep is going on with your voice? Uh, were you on helium? Is the main question. So, uh, yeah, if I could have a, a deeper voice in the first movie, I think that would be, that would be it. But one scene that I, I do like uh, that we did would be when uh, Fred and George put their name in the Goblet of Fire. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a lot of fun filming that, and uh, um, I'm quite proud of that scene. Very cool. Very cool. Ivana? Um, I remember distinctly watching the fifth one for the first time, because, I mean, I'd always gone to Harry Potter um, like films and the, the premieres of the uh, first time I'd seen it. I'd always go with such excitement, covered in fan, you know, just 
like I write, you know, my face and a t-shirt of Dan's face, and so it was really weird to be at a Harry Potter film dressed all fancy, and you know, to have been a part of it. it, it I, 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 I wasn't prepared for it, and then suddenly the music came on, and I felt like it relaxed me, and I was like, great, I'm just gonna watch a Harry Potter film, nothing better. And then I came on the screen about, what, 20, 30 minutes into it, and it just immediately stopped being a Harry Potter film. And it was just like, why are you on the screen? It just took me out of it completely, and I just wanted me to get off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy it. I didn't, I, I saw me, I didn't see Luna, and so I found it awkward to watch. Um, but that's just, that's just the way it is. And I don't know. Well, I don't know if I changed anything. I think I was happy with what I did, um, but I think pro I would like I would have liked Lynn to be less of a, like she was often used for comic relief, and I think there's more depth to her. I think she gives so much good advice, and she's quite spiritual, and she was often like the joke. So probably more just of her uh, to give more. Um, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Um, depth. 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 Okay. Depth. Immersion <laughs> and depth. You guys are two for two right now. Very good. Great answers. Great answers. And another great question. Thank you so much. All right, Stephen. And then we'll go right here to in front to you, Rusty. Stephen, who do you have with you? I have Preston all the way from Missouri. Preston from Missouri. Welcome out, Preston. If you were an Animagus, what animal would you be and why? Nice. All right, if you're an animagus, what animal would you be and why? Who wants to take that one first? That's a that's a tough question. <laughs> you may have stumped the panel. I'd, I'd love to be a cat, but I'm just not that cool. They're just so cool. Um, probably like a koala or something. They seem quite nice and. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like to upset people. You know, I just like everyone to get on, and I think that koala. Yeah. All right. A, a koala aspiring to be a cat. A koala <laughs> aspiring. It all circles back around to. It's like maybe a koala who has delusions that he's a feline. Or okay. Yeah. All right. Great answer. <laughs> Oliver, um, I'd like to be a sloth. Because you could just chill out in the tree and just, uh, yeah, this is all right, isn't it? And they always seem so happy. <laughs> but apparently they're not. <laughs> Michael, is there a, a certain animal that you make it you'd like to be? Well, I'd like to be a tiger. A tiger? Uh, okay. I wouldn't really like to be one, but I'd like to have a tiger as my friend. You know, and every time I go out for a walk, he comes with me on a lead. And he's very well behaved, and he smiles at me, and we're just great mates. He's like my brother. I, you know, I'd like to be a tiger. It sounds a bit silly, but they're beautiful creatures. And I think he'd love me, you know. He'd be very kind to me. I think you guys would get along well. You and the tiger. I think so, yeah. yeah think Great. So. Yeah. All right. Great it's, answer. <laughs> yeah. And that's about all we have from Michael Gambon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> James. Tiger. tiger. Love it. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in two minds. I'm going to go with the hedgehog. Hedgehog. Yeah. All right, why? Why yeah. the hedgehog? Well I, well, I used to have a little hedgehog which used to come into my garden every night over the summer. Okay. And I'd eat out on my balcony and I'd see this hedgehog, so I'd start leaving water out for him. I nicknamed him Sonic. And, um, <laughs> original, I know. and uh, uh, every night he would come out at the same time. And uh, I kind of liked how he, they're very quick hedgehogs, but also they could protect themselves well in a little ball and then disappear. That'd be, that'd be my kind of defense mechanism. Just get in a little ball and zip Just on out of there. Yep. All right, bye-bye. Yep. Great question. Thank you so much from our friends from Missouri. Yes, Rusty. I have uh, Sonia and Anya. They are sisters from Boston, and they have one question. And Anya was actually learned, she learned how to be a Bobaton earlier today. Yes, we saw her. You guys well. She did a really good job with that. What are your questions? So I'd just like to thank you all for coming out, and we love your work. And it was so great to meet James and Oliver today. And Anya's going to ask the question. So, from your personalities in real life, what Patronus do you think you would have? From your personalities in real life, how you are, what Patronus, what would your Patronus be? Who wants to take that one first? Ivana, sure. Same, I've answered this a few times this weekend. It's still a meow, sorry. 
Um, and then Miel is, um, it's like an internet thing, but it looks like it's real. When I first saw it, I was like, well, where can I get one? But it's just Photoshop. They've put um, a cat's body with wings and owl feet. And I just, that, that makes me happy. And I think that's the, uh, that's what a Patronus needs to do. It just needs to make you happy. And um, yeah, personality wise, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm quite a fluffy person. I'm not, yeah. I'm, yeah. So they kind of match fluffy. up. Fluffy. All right, they kind of match up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. James? <laughs> I was gonna say what Oliver just said, because that did actually make me happy. I'm a big South Park fan. Okay. So. I'd have man bear pig, because he's half man, half bear, half pig. <laughs> and we won't ask you why. Because it makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> Oliver? Um, I quite like to be a wombat. I think a wombat? Be, yeah, my patronus, because they kind of just, they do their own thing, they're quite protective, and, um, but they can have a bit vicious to them if they need to be. Dark, right. dark answer there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wombat. And Michael, what would your Patronus be? What would your uh, animal be? I'd be a tiger. <laughs> tiger. Or I, I wouldn't mind being a tiger's brother. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, and would that would that tiger's brother be your friend? They both be my friend. And would you would you walk down the street with them? One on each side, on leash. On leashes. <laughs> and you, you guys would probably be very happy. I, I, I hope so. We'd be best friends. Yeah, best friends, at least. If anyone come near me, the one threatening to me, they would go for them. They'd protect you, yeah, because well, they're Patronus, so that only makes sense. They belong to me. Right. Anyway, I haven't got a tiger, so that's the end of the conversation. There it is, right there. Well, we can always hope and wish for those tigers. We'll come back next year and see if you have one. Yes, let's move one. along. Yes, Julia. I have Lal all the way from Turkey to meet you ah, today. Ah, Lal, Lal is your name? Yes. Lal. Hello, Lal. My question is to my favorite characters, Oliver and James. Um, how is it like the last day on the set? How is it like saying goodbye to Louise and Cat? That was, um, yeah, it was different. I've got to be honest, because we a lot of us finished at different stages. Um, so we kind of did the whole goodbye thing, and then that was it. And then James and I were called in to do a, a, a um, pickup. It's called reshoot. So later in the uh, in the season, just before it was probably not for long about six months before the film came out, after everything had wrapped. So we had to have wigs on to, uh, to do it. And it was when we were standing on the, on the battlement scene, when Fred and George had seen Voldemort's army appear. Um, which surprised me, really, because it brought me back to being that character again. But the weirdest thing was that the studios were actually getting knocked down after we finished, because they rebuilt them all to this new thing in Leavesden. And there were actually bulldozers waiting outside for us to finish to knock the thing down. So that day I was thinking, uh, okay, this is, this is done now. And it was kind of like when you, leave, when you leave senior school for the first, oh, the only time you do. When you leave senior school, you think, oh, I only left them once, yeah. No, I didn't leave with fireworks or anything, but like we left, uh, and that was the main time when I thought, oh, right, okay, that's it. Yeah, that was that. James? He's said everything. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great, then. Thank you so much. Yes, down to Rusty. I have uh, Becky here who has traveled all the way from Florida. Becky, thank you for taking the long journey to get here. What's your question, Becky? What were your favorite costumes to wear during the films? Favorite costumes to wear? Well, you had a bunch. I had the best costumes. Um, the, the dress that I wore to Slughorn's party was so cool. I really loved it and I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was going to a magical party, but I wasn't allowed to sit down on it, sit down in it, so I, probably not my favorite to wear. Um, and then, oh, and then the, the lion hat that she wears at the Quidditch match, because it was just so cool. And nobody else had a hat like that on set. <laughs> you do have one. It looks rad. <laughs> oh, there's there the go. love goods. Shout out to the love goods. <laughs> Michael, you had a pretty comfortable costume throughout oh, the uh, series. I had the most comfortable costume. Lightweight. I almost, almost, I was wearing almost nothing. It's so light. It was two <laughs> layers. Because I, uh, before I went into Harry Potter, the costumes were quite heavy, so I'm told. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, then they made them light for episode three, part three. And I got the light costume. I just wore slippers. Little slippers. Well, I got big feet. They were big slippers. And... Uh, <laughs> And very light costume, and a nice wig, 
And that's all. I, oh, the only thing I hated was my beard. The beard. And my moustache. Because it tickles all the time, you know. And, the, and, and if you do a lot of talking, if Dumbledore talks a lot, the moustache and beard start to come off. Because it breaks, it starts breaking. You have to be restarted. Anyway, very nice. But all, that's the problem with every actor who does something in a theatre or on the stage. Beards always fall off. All right. Oh, is that enough? I don't know. No, it's a great answer. Are you kidding me? All right. Thank you for sharing that. Beards never stay on. Remember that if you go into show business. James. I really like the suits that the, when the Wheezies started wearing suits, especially the, um, the ones in the Sith movie, when they run the Wheezies, Wizard Wheezies joke shop, and also for the wedding as well, they, they wore different suits. And they were both tailor-made suits. They had a designer come over from Paris to London who measured us up. Very and cool. they kind of did it a bit more extravagant um, in a way, but they were so comfy, so comfy. And it was a shame we weren't allowed to keep them, really. But they were that comfy, really nice. Excellent. Oliver? Um, I think the Quidditch outfits were always good. Quidditch Especially outfits? on the first, first two movies, they were, really they were really comfortable, actually. So we used to, uh, we used to wear those quite often. That yeah, was good. Very good. Excellent question. You guys are doing great. Yes, Aaron, we'll go out to you. All right, guys. I have Megan, Britta, and Becca here. They have hand-painted some really awesome T-shirts that we want mm. you guys to see. So ladies, turn around. Show off your T-shirts. Aren't they awesome? Oh, very cool. Right? Now, Megan has a question specifically for James and Michael. Hi. Thank you guys for coming. I was just wondering how you felt about your character's death how did you find out about it, and how did you react? Okay, so the first time that you realized that your character was going to be no more, how did that, uh, how did that news come to you, and how did that affect you? I, I can't remember how I, I, think, I think someone must have come into my dressing room and told me that uh, in a couple of weeks' time I'm finished. And uh, I was depressed, terribly depressed, but I wanted to stay. I think I went out in part... Uh, when did I leave? Just before, two shows before the end. But I, I came back as a ghost on two occasions, so I didn't really get thrown out. You know, I was still there. But it's a bit of a shock when someone tells you that. Particularly when they're smiling, you know. And they're supposed to be a friend of yours. <laughs> anyway. Oh well. Well, hopefully everyone here knew that that's what happened. <laughs> uh, also, when I found out what happened to to my character, I was actually on the bullet train in Japan, and I travel a bit. <laughs> I was uh, traveling, and it was actually the seventh book had, had come out three days before, so I had kept my phone off the whole time, so I wanted to get through the whole book whilst I was traveling. And as I was reading it, the ticket inspector was coming up the train asking for tickets, and I read what had happened to Fred, and I was quite in shock by this. And then I was then in shock because I was in shock. That was like very confusing. <laughs> Meanwhile, this Japanese ticket inspector saying, ticket, ticket, ticket. And like, my ticket was in the bottom of my bag. And I was like, oh, hang on, mate, I've just died here. Let me just, <laughs> just, just, just read this. So here, yeah, that was a, a, very, a very mixed emotional day, but um, it, was, it, was, it was a mix of emotions, uh, yeah. Great question. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to Stephen. Yes, Stephen. I have Holly all the way from Daytona Beach. Hi, Holly. Hi, guys. Um, I have a question for James and Oliver. Um, I know in the movie you guys um, did a lot of um, pranks um, in the movies, but I was wondering offset behind the scenes if you played any pranks in the past. This question always comes up, and you guys, you have some pretty good ones. So we'll, we, let, we'll let the two brothers field this one. Yeah, we, we have a few, but... Many can't be spoken of um, for visa reasons, really, being in America. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we had some good fun. My favorite one is what? It's just like off, off the cuff type ones. Like, we had a lot of snow one day when we were waiting, uh, or overnight when we were staying down to go and film. And uh, James was in the apartment next to me. So I thought, oh, I'm a bit bored. So I went outside and just packed all this snow against his door. <laughs> Which I thought was great, because I knew when he got out of bed the next day, when he went to go to the car, that you'd hear the door open and <laughs> all this snow going inside. <laughs> and so there it is. <laughs> I, uh, there's, yeah, there are quite a few. I remember we, were due, we went to, we had a premiere in New York at Radio City 
people, and there's thousands of people there. And we're waiting to go before the film, they call us on one by one and say hello. And I'm standing next to Devon Murray, who plays Seamus Finnegan. And we were saying, and um, meanwhile, David uh, Heyman, the producer, was giving a speech to the, everybody. And Devon was going to be first on. I don't know, went in height order or something, I don't know. <laughs> he, he was, uh, I said to him, I said, have you done your speech then? He said, what? I was like, yeah, a speech. We're going to be giving a speech to everybody. Everyone's got like five minutes each. So, I've got a speech. No, no, I've got a speech. He's like, no, mate, you've got, like, you've got to know this stuff. Like, they're, they're going to ask them. So he's freaking out. And as he's freaking out, let's welcome Devin Murray. And uh, Devin kind of like wonders on. And he's, hi. hi uh, and now let's welcome. And so he was uh, <laughs> happily relieved at that point. So you didn't let him off the hook before he went. He just had to kind of be ushered along. And then he knew that, okay, yeah, that, this that's, was... that's when it's funny. But... <laughs> that's great. That's a good question. Okay, so we have time for one more, and we're gonna go to Julia. Great, I'm here with Jenner, she's from California, with a question for Michael. Um, how did you get over the initial intimidation of picking up the um, Dumbledore role from Richard Harris, who unfortunately passed away? Uh, well, I, I knew Richard, I, I'm pretty well, I've known him over the years, spent a lot of time with him, so it was always a shock when I found out he died, but, it didn't uh, uh, do anything to me at all. I just turned up and started acting. Um, it's just normal. He wouldn't have minded that. In fact, he'd have, he'd have probably been jealous of me. I don't know. I, it didn't have any effect on me at all. Except, um, you know, you just have to become that character. So you have to get it inside you, put it in your mind, get it behind your ears and your head. So you, you know exactly what you're going to do. But a lot of people ask me that, and I must say it made no... It didn't do anything to me at all, except for please, I'm playing Dumbledore. Well, as we know them, of course, Richard was a fantastic actor, and I think everybody can agree that that role was portrayed by both individuals uh, fantastically as well. And ladies and gentlemen, that uh, concludes this question and answer, and of course, our celebration of Harry Potter 2015. How about a big round of applause for these four fantastic individuals of Bonnie Lynch, James and Oliver Phelps, Michael Gambon, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scotty B. It has been such a pleasure being with all of you and seeing the intensity of the fans and their love for everything.